Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ number 37, the knife series where I answer all your knife questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, we're going over some things like knife safety, always very important, and how little amount of money you can spend and still expect to get a good knife. Let's get into it. Did you get a new shirt? No. <laughs> All right, thank you to everyone who has been leaving their questions in the comment section of these videos. We've got some really great stuff to talk about as a result. If you want a chance to have one of your questions featured in a future episode, as always, just leave it down below. Let's get into the first one this week, which comes from Matthew Danik. Uh, David, you mentioned a couple times that as you've gotten deeper into bladesmithing, you upgraded from a Ken Onion Edition Workshop to a more robust one. I'm not sure you've ever gone into detail about what you ended up purchasing, but I'm interested. Sure, um, I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, you won't be able to go buy one yourself because what I have is kind of uh, cobbled together <laughs> from, a, from a few different things. Uh, but essentially the next step up from a, a Ken Onion unit with the blade grinding attachment, which I love by the way, it's a fantastic unit. But above that you get into like actual professional metal and knife grinders. And a two by 72 inch belt size is the most common. Uh, what I have is actually a dual two by 48 setup. It has a, a motor in the center, wheel on each side. And I bought it from a, a machinist who kind of made it up himself from some parts to do what he wanted. And then I've modified it further. So on, on the left side, I've got, I can work off the platen. On the right side, I've got slack section and a small wheel holder so I can do different small radiuses. And then of course you got the contact wheels on each of the, the bottom sides to work with variable speed. I love it. It's really awesome, uh, but not something I would ever recommend to most people because that's not what we're, what we're about here for the hobbyists, more or less. If you're, if you're getting into the, uh, the more heavy, uh, actual blade grinding and stuff, I don't do any smithing myself. I'm all stock removal. Um, but that, that's kind of the next step up that you're going to want to start to look at. Some people do, uh, actually go up, um, to a, a one by 30 inch belt on, uh, some of these hardware store, small, uh, sanders out there. It's certainly an option too, but definitely not professional stuff. So thank you for the question very much. Next question comes from Dan in Michigan. Uh, recently I found out I have to comply with a blade length limit. Very sorry. Uh, I haven't had issues so far and I'd like to keep it that way. What folders could you suggest that are at least four inches closed, have a blade no longer than three inches, don't scream tactical and are a hundred dollars or less American made is a bonus. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, thing that comes to mind here that, uh, fits those things has kind of a classic look has the length requirements you're looking for American made in that budget, the buck 112 slim pro right now, American made comes in $80 blade length there. You've got your three inch, uh, under three inch requirement S 30 V steel. So you've got some good materials there, Micarta or G 10 handles. This is the green Micarta one. And unlike the, uh, the old school, uh, Rangers from buck, it's not a super thick handle. So this is definitely a pocket friendly knife. Again, also thank you to that deep carry pocket clip there, which is reversible for left or right carry lock back there, dual thumb studs. So you've got one hand opening and it doesn't scream tactical. It's just a nice pocket knife gets you, uh, gets you that, uh, that good amount of workmanlike capability for sure. Um, some other good options. Uh, the Kershaw leak is always a, a fan favorite. Um, I don't know if that's too tactical for you, but another option along similar lines, the Gerber fastball. Again, S 30 V three inch blade, aluminum handles here comes in just under a hundred bucks. You've got a liner lock and you've got ball bearings in the pivot. So a lot more flippable and fast action than that buck, whether that gets to be too tactical seeming in, in the, uh, the area where you need that three inch limit, that's up to you to decide, but either one of these good materials, American construction, and some really nice designs as well. Next question comes from grabe Q. Uh, I would like to know what is the cheapest EDC knife that you would fairly recommend? Um, easy answer. The K bar Dozier folding Hunter in aus eight all day, every day, 22 bucks does not feel like a cheap knife, even though it is very inexpensive. Uh, actually this would be a good uh, budget option for our, uh, our previous questioner as well. Cause you've got three inch blade length here, 
Aus 8 steel, like I said, uh, but D2 is available. Uh, but again, that's more expensive. You're looking to spend the least amount of uh, good money here. So go with the Aus 8 version. There's actually, uh, for a couple bucks less even, you can get a, uh, an even shorter blade, but three inch blade, I think is where it's at. But either one, same, same kind of quality though. Zytel handles in this case, you've got a reversible pocket clip. You have a reversible thumb stud and that back lock but you got that excellent versatile everyday carry blade with the neutral handle shape means just about anyone uh, is gonna be able to hold onto this real nicely. And while you may not feel like you're carrying a premium knife, this is not a knife that feels cheap either. Really good option. Uh, actually, another one would be the, uh, the slim select versions of that Ranger. A couple bucks more. Uh, I think they're about 23 or 24 right now, but they have uh, injection molded handles and 420 HC blades. Another good option, but I guess Purely based on dollars, that K-Bar uh, would take it since it is just a skosh cheaper. All right, next up is Forged by Dragon. Uh, another one to compare the Rat 1 to, apart from that BK-40, is the Essie of Vispa. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you there, actually. Um, i got examples of both here. I've got the Rat 1 at the top and the Essie of Vispa at the bottom. Even though from the profile shot, they look super similar. Blade itself uh, is a little bit different. You've got the uh, two different drop points. One's a more, the uh, Vispa's a little bit more of a spear point. Uh, and the handle profile, at least in the, uh, the, the side on shot, looks the same. And it's even the same guys designed both of these knives. These are actually very different knives in actual use. The one thing that the, uh, the rat knives have going for them, especially the full size rats, are the thicker handles here. You've got a inexpensive working knife. Again, another good option, uh, Rat 2, especially for uh, our previous questioner. But you've got a, a hard use working knife that has a handle to support some of those harder uses. The Avispa is a really good knife. Don't, do not get me wrong whatsoever, but the handle is significantly thinner. I mean, I hold them up side by side. You can definitely see a difference there. If you need something with a larger blade, but you don't need something with a handle that's going to support like really long uh, cutting times or pushing through really heavy tasks, you're going to be able to carry this a little bit easier thanks to that slim nature. It's not as bulky in your pocket. A little bit less weight, uh, about half an ounce than the Ontario. It's not a, not a huge difference, but it is there. Um, but yeah, that's why even though these guys are very similar looking from the side, very, very different animals in actual use. Both each good at some different things, a little bit more than the other. Next question comes from uh, X Little Country X. Uh, I have a challenge for you. I love the Spyderco Shaman, but it's out of my budget. Do you know of any Shaman-like knives for about half the price? Sure, here is a Spyderco Shaman. Excellent knife here, uh, 210 bucks, American made, a little bit over three and a half inches of blade, S30V, high flat grind, contoured G10 handles, and of course, Spyderco's compression lock. Really nice, really strong lockup. And one of the key things about the, uh, the Shaman is it's, it's seen as a harder use knife. It's a pretty comfortable knife to hold and the locking mechanism is strong and importantly, allows you to keep your fingers clear of the edge when you're uh, when you're closing the knife. So I've got an option here for you. New Knife Center exclusive SIG K320s by Hogue. Um, the Knife Center exclusive versions now have a stonewashed S30V blade. Very similar in blade length. Actually sharpened edge is about the same between these two knives. Similar style handles. You've got black uh, injection molded in, in the case of the SIG, and you've got a finger trail there at the front. It's actually match up really well. And while it's not quite half price, it almost is there. It comes in about 119 right now for that SIG. And you've got their crossbar lock as well, which nothing's obviously going to be exactly the same as the compression lock since that is a Spyderco patented system, but you can do the same things with it. You can keep your fingers out of the path of the blade, it's nice and strong. It's even more ambidextrous than the Shaman. And you can do that wrist flicky stuff as well. These things are very excellent, I think, and a pretty compelling, more budget oriented alternative to that Shaman. Uh, both made in the USA too, which I really like. Um, I've also got another one here on the, uh, the way budget end of the spectrum. Uh, and that is the Gerber Sumo. Uh, comes in about 37 bucks. 
A little bit more blade length here, but you've got a, a 7CR series stainless, so it's obviously not gonna hold an edge nearly as long. But kind of similar vibes in a way. Um, this is probably, uh, you, since you're asking something in sort of the half price range, you probably aren't looking at things way down at this budget range, but some other folks out there might be. Um, but it, again, all of these knives have excellent cutting geometry with either high flat or full flat grinds. You've got a crossbar lock on this Sumo as well. So again, same, uh, same benefits as the compression lock and some nice comfortable G10 on the handles as well. Next question comes from John Hughes. Wait. That John Hughes? Might be. Typing from the uh, from the afterworld. Interesting. Um, Hello DCA and KC love the series. My favorite knife design of all time is the Spyderco Tenacious. It's a really good design. Uh, the opening mechanism, I, AKA the spidey hole in the blade versus a thumb stud. Looking to upgrade outside of Spyderco, do you have any suggestions with a similar size? In fact, I do, and we just looked at it. It's that, so that SIG K320 again. Again, kind of similar sizes. You've got the, uh, the opening hole you want. You've definitely got an upgrade in blade steel. Slightly, slightly less edge itself, so a little bit less length to work with, but you've got the S30V to boot. One thing I didn't mention, nice deep carry pocket clip on this as well with some nice, uh, nice ridges there to grab onto. Check that guy out. Uh, it's, not a, uh, it's not a cheap knife. It's not super inexpensive, but I think very attainable in price. Our next question is from Jeroen Voss. Hey David, that Rhino tool isn't an ax, it's a tuning fork. So he's talking about this half breed blades Rhino rescue ax, comes in about 280 bucks uh, because on the video last week, I did that. This thing just keeps on ringing, it's really cool. Uh, we first noticed it actually just pulling it out of the, uh, the Kydex sheath, it was enough to kind of vibrate it. Um, but a good tuning fork should be in tune. So let's see, I've got my, uh, my chromatic tuner app here uh, from Fender, not sponsored content. Need complete silence for this to work, let's see. So it's a really sharp G. So not a good tuning fork. Not a good tuning fork. Could, you just have to tune everything slightly sharp to this guy, if you wanted to do that sort of thing. Thank you for your question, there we go. Uh, which brings us to the lightning round for today. Uh, Jay Harigab87 asks, best truck knife? Uh, something in your truck, I'm thinking thick, beefy, borderline indestructible, just something that's ready to throw down, get down and dirty. Uh, Becker BK2 or SE5, be good places to start. Uh, if you want something bigger, more choppy, Becker BK9 or SE Hunglis or Ontario SP5 for the budget. Uh, check those guys out, those will be really good. Uh, Mike Blenner Hassett asks, Hey there, DCA. I'm looking for a gentleman's knife for a non-knife person to be given as a gift. Thoughts? Yeah. Um, obviously, you probably, for a non-knife person, you don't need to spend a lot of money because most of them aren't going to know the difference either way. But get them something good. Get them something classy that feels more expensive than it is. CJRB Rhea. Another three-inch option here. Uh, range of, of things too. Starts at like uh, 30 bucks or so. Uh, this particular one, Knife Center exclusive with the Packerwood scales and the Powder Metallurgy blade, I think is a really good sweet spot. It's about 55 bucks, looks super classy, has that kind of timeless pocket knife vibes to it. And you get nice liner lock, one hand opening, and a pocket clip as well. Very nice. Next question is from James Harris. How come Obsidian is not used in any folders or straight knives? Uh, it's way too brittle for that sort of thing. Very easy answer there. Um, you do hear things uh, though about some uh, surgeons actually preferring obsidian scalpels, which there are companies out there that make those just because, you know, when you get down to the, the chipped, you know, microscopic edge, that flake, flaked edge or whatever you call it, sharper than, uh, than even their advanced machines are able to get the steel to be. So that's pretty impressive and cool stuff as far as I'm concerned. Uh, next question, Kenneth O'Coin. Uh, my wife just gave birth to my baby boy. Congratulations, man. What would you recommend as a hand-me-down camp slash bushcraft knife for me to start the tradition with? Uh, I'd say anything by LT Wright, but especially the next gen model. This particular one right here is about 190. American made, sized pretty nicely so that it's going to work really well when they're younger and have smaller hands, but 
it still feels good when you've got slightly larger than average hands as the grown up that I do. Really nice feel, really great company, classic, timeless looks to them and built to last. Next question is from Patrick 12. How can you tell a Boker from Germany and one from China? Uh, real easy, it'll say it somewhere on the blade. Um, you're, uh, if you have something that says Boker Plus, then it is not a German made knife. It's made from somewhere outside. Usually China, sometimes Taiwan, sometimes even US on some of the, uh, some of the more premium uh, non Boker or non uh, German made products. But the dead giveaway there is you're gonna have that big plus symbol there. And that's the Boker Plus. Uh, German made Bokers will say somewhere on the blade, typically Solingen. So Solingen, Germany, never know if I'm pronouncing it quite right or not. Um, but again, right there on the blade. Interestingly enough, um, you've also got Boker Arbolito as another label. Those are actually made in Buenos Aires. So very easy to tell uh, because they're, they're always pretty upfront on the labeling of their products. Next question, Veer Elliott says, asks, um, says and asks, I have started to collect knives and from time to time, I find that I cut my fingers by accident when handling them. Some of them have needed stitches. My wife says I should give this hobby up, but no chance of that. Good man. Um, other than be careful, is there any advice you can avoid, give to avoid cutting yourself? Um, I've thought of buying cut resistant gloves, or is this just an unfortunate hazard of this wonderful pastime? Um, yes, apart from be careful, I can also say from experience, unfortunately, never try to catch a falling machete. Uh, it doesn't work out too well for you. I got the you know, nice big old scar here on my, my joint to prove it. We won't, we won't focus too closely on that. It'll make, make some people queasy perhaps. Uh, but as the adage goes, a falling knife has no handle and it's very true. Just let it fall, <laughs> let, it, let it go where it lies. Uh, cut, cut resistant gloves could be a decent idea, but I think what uh, the, the thing to do is part of getting into knives and part of getting into any sort of edged tool is learning to treat them with the respect they deserve. That's going to take care of 99% of your problems right there. You'll still probably get you know a nick here or there. I got one a little bit earlier th earlier this week myself. It just happens, uh, but really, you know, learn to respect the tools, and they're going to treat you well as at the same time. Which brings us to our final question, our most serious question of the day, from the Four CP. If you had to chase someone with a knife just to scare them, what would it be? Uh, for you, I would recommend a couple of things. Definitely some court ordered supervision probably a restraining order and almost definitely some therapy. That'll do. I think that covers it. Thank you everyone for your questions. That's all we're going to get through today. Make sure to leave your own questions below and we'll come through and pick some out for our future episodes. If you want to get your hands on some of these knives, we'll leave links in the description as always, which will take you over to knifecenter.com and make sure you sign up for the knife rewards program. So when you put your hard earned money down on one of these knives, you'll earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time. I swear that's a new shirt. No. <laughs> <laughs>